we are performing Namadip Dham Parikrama with Nitananda Prabhu and Jiva Goswami and other devotees. Yesterday we heard that in Mudadrundip, Ramchandra, during his exile in previous Kalpa, he came here to Navadip and when he was there, he was smiling. Then Sita asked him, why you are smiling? Then Ramachandra said, listen, O Sita, I, I will now narrate to you a most confidential episode. When the blessed Kali Yuga comes, I will assume a golden form and appear here in Nodia. In the house of Sri Jagannath Mishra, I will appear from Sri Sachi Devi Swamp in the form of Gauranga. I will bestow the highest divine love upon those fortunate persons who will behold my childhood pastimes. At that time, O oh beloved, I will perform pastimes of studying and teaching and I will reveal the glories of the Holy Name. I will accept sannyas and go to Nilachar. My mother will take her daughter-in-law on her lap and weep. Hearing these words of Sri Ramachandra, Sri Sita Devi asked, O oh Lotus Eyed One, why will you make your mother cry? Why will you leave your wife and take sannyas? What happiness will you get by causing her such grief? Sri Ramachandra replied, O oh Beloved, you know everything. In order to instruct the living entities, you are acting as if ignorant so that we may get the teaching. She asked this question for us. Listen, O Sita, loving devotion for me is relished in two ways. Happiness that arises from union with me is known as Sambhok and that which arises out of separation from me is called Bipralamba. Although my eternal devotees always desire only some book, by my mercy they also relish Bipralamba. The Bhaktas know that the distress that arises from separation from Sri Krishna is in reality the most exalted bliss. This is because one derives millions of times greater happiness from the meeting after Vipralamba than the happiness of a meeting prior to Vipralamba. Separation from me also yields happiness because it is related to Krishna who is the source of all happiness. So that feeling of separation from Krishna is also one kind of bliss and even more intense and the union in that separation also is very intense. And after separation, that union is more intense. So in many ways, this separation, but this is transcendental. That is why it is blissful. Mother Koshalya, yes, therefore, to attain that happiness, you also accept separation from me. This is described in the four Vedas. Mother Koshalya, whom the Vedas describe to be Aditi, will be known by the name Sri Sachi Devi in my avatar as Sri Gauranga. You will receive me as Vishnu Priya Devi and out of separation from me, you will manifest the golden deity of me. That is the Dhameshwar Mahaprabhu. In this avatar of Sri Ram, I, in separation from you, will have a golden Sita made, and I will worship you in the city of Ayodhya. You, in turn, will make a deity of Sri Gauranga and worship me in this city of Nodia. O oh, Sita, this matter is highly confidential and, you sh and should not yet be disclosed in the presence of people in general. This place named Navadip is most dear to me. 
Ayodhya and other places can never be equal to it. O Sita, upon the arrival of Kali Yuga, these three, Ram Vat, will disappear from the vision of ordinary people and remain here in a hidden form, like Bangshi Bhat. Bhat is three, Banyan three. Uh, so this three is Ram Bhat. In this way, Sri Ramachandra resided here with Sita and Lakshman for some time. Thereafter, they left for, for Danda Karanya to fulfill the purpose of their pastimes. O Jiva, behold the place where Bhagavan Sri Ramachandra's cottage was situated. By the will of the Lord, Sri Ramachandra's friend Guhaka took birth here in a Brahmana family. In Gaur Lila, Guhaka was known as Sadananda Bhattacharya. He knew nothing in the three worlds but Sri Ram. The day on which my Lord took birth in Mayapur, Sadananda Bhattacharya was also present in the house of Sri Jagannath Mishra. At the time of Sriman Mahaprabhu's appearance, all the demigods assembled at Sri Jagannath Mishra's residence to take darshan of Sri Gaurahari. The great devotee Brahmana Sadananda Bhattacharya recognized the demigods and seeing them offering prayers, he understood that his Lord had now descended. Greatly pleased, the Brahmana returned to his home and began to meditate upon his worshipful deity Sri Ramachandra. In his meditation, he had darshan of Sri Gaurang Gauranga Sundar instead of Sri Ramachandra. On that some days back it was stated that if you chant your mantra in Navadip, then you will get a revelation of that mantra. One meaning, another meaning is you will receive the darshan of Gauranga in Navadip. Even if you chant like he, he was chanting Ram Mantra, but he got darshan of Ramachandra. No, of uh, Gorango. sorry. He saw Sri Gorango Mahaprabhu brilliantly seated upon a throne with Brahma and other demigods fanning him with a chamara. He again saw Sri Ramachandra, whose complexion resembles darkish newly sprouted grass. On the right side of Sri Ramachandra was Lakshman, on his left side Sita, and in front Bhakta Hanuman. Having seen all this, the Brahman understood the fundamental truth of the Lord. Absorbed in ecstatic bliss, the Brahmana went to Mayapur and not seen by anyone, had darshan of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu to his heart's content. The Brahmana again and again thought, I am blessed, I am blessed. Sri Ramachandra Shri Ramachandra uh, is present as Shri Gaurahari right in front of my eyes. After some time, when Sankirtan started in Sridam Navadip, Sadhananda also chanted the name of Gaura and danced in the Kirtan party. O Jiva, devotees with spotless, uncontaminated hearts take darshan of Shri Bandiravan at this place. After hearing all these narrations and having had darshan of the eternal abode, the devotees surrounded Sri Nitananda Prabhu and began to dance. Ecstatic symptoms arose upon the body of Sri Jiva and he began loudly calling out, O oh, Gaurango, O oh, Gaurango. That day, Sri Nitananda Prabhu, being exceedingly blissful, stayed in that village at Sri Narayani Devi's house. That most pure and ch chaste Narayani Devi, who is also the mother of Vyas, means Brindavan Dastakur, personally served all the Vaishnavas. Early the next morning, after walking some distance, everyone entered Sri Pekuntapur. Our Parikrama, when doing today, 
In Mudadrundip, there is one place of Saranga Murari and Vasudev Data Thakur's Diti that we see in Mudadrundip and also this birthplace of Brindavanda Thakur. Now there is one Gauriya Math there and Diti of Gauranitananda of Brindavanda Thakur and Diti of Brindavanda Thakur also. And on the, the, the walls of that Math, you will find verses of Chaitanya Bhagavat. They are painted there. Some verses. Bangla. So then they entered by Kuntapur. Brindavanda Thakur, author of Chaitanya Bhagavat. For the sake of obeying the order of Sri Nityananda Prabhu and Sri Janava Devi, this wretched pauper, Sri Bhaktivinoda Thakur, sings the glories of Nadia. All glories, all glories to Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu and the Panchatattva. All glories, all glories to the dwelling place of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu, Sri Navadip Dham. When they arrived in Sri Baikuntapur, Shri Nitananda Prabhu smiled gently and spoke to Shri Jiva. You should know with certainty that this place, which is situated on the northern border of the eight petal Shri Navadip, is Baikunta Puri. Shri Baikunta, the abode of the Supreme Lord Shri Narayan, is situated beyond the Biraja River in the spiritual realm, the Parabhyam. In Baikunta, the three potencies, Shri, Bhu, and Lila, serve Shri Naren. Maya can never enter this place. Brahma is merely the splendor emanating from this transcendental abode of Shri Baikunta Loka. Brahma means here Brahm, Brahm, that with short A on the end, like Brahman. That is splendor. Kiron, like rays of Vaikuntha. People with material vision perceive this Vaikuntha pur as nothing but a material realm. In this Vaikuntha pur, Sri Narad, with his transcendental vision, first saw the eternal, untainted Bhagavan Sri Narayan. Thereafter, having received the darshan of Sri Gaura Sundar, Sri Narat resided here for a long time. An old and confidential history is related to this place. Once Sri Lakshman Acharya, means Sri Ramanuja Acharya, came to Jagannath Puri. By reciting many prayers, Sri Ramanuja Acharya blessed, no, pleased, Sorry. Ramanuja Charjo pleased Sri Jagannath, and out of mercy, Sri Jagannath extended his darshan to him. Sri Jagannath Dev said, O oh Ramanuja, go and take darshan of Sri Navadip. I will appear very soon in Jagannath Mishra's house in the town of Nadia. Sri Navadip is very dear to me. Parabhyoma, the spiritual sky, is situated within just one of its sections. You are my eternal servant and foremost among the devotees. You must certainly take darshan of Sri Navadip. All of your disciples are immersed in Dasyaras, the mellow of servitude. You should therefore leave them here and go to Navadip alone. O Ramanuja, O resolute one, birth on this earth is useless for that person who, in spite of obtaining a human form of life, does not attain darshan of Sri Navadip Dham. Sri Rangam, Sri Venkata Tirupati, and Yadava Achal are all just a small portion of Sri Navadip. Therefore, O son of Keshava, Ramanuja, Go to Sri Navadip and take darshan of the beautiful form of Sri Gauranga. You have come to this material world only to preach Bhakti Yoga. May your life be successful by the mercy of Sri Gauranga. 
you should go to Kurmastan after taking darshan of Sri Navadip. There you will again meet with your disciples. Hearing this, Sri Lakshman Acharya folded his hands and made a request to Sri Jagannath. O Lord, by your merciful words, I have now, for the first time, heard about Sri Gaurahari, but I know nothing about the tattoo of him. Sri Jagannath, the friend of the entire world, mercifully spoke to Sri Ramanuja. Everyone knows that Sri Krishna is the Lord of Goloka, that Lord Sri Narayan is his Vilasa Murti, that Sri Krishna is the Supreme Absolute Truth, and that he lives in Sri Dham Brindavan. O Ramanuja, that very Sri Krishna is completely and eternally Sri Gaurahari, and that very Sri Brindavan Dham is the town of Sri Navadip. As the eternal form of Sri Gauranga Sundar, I reside in Sri Navadip Dham, which is superior to all other holy places in the world. Jai Krishna, Sai Gaur, Sai Jagannath. One song is there. Krishna, Jagannath and Mahaprabhu, they are one and the same person. And Narayan also is, well, Bhagavan is one, but different lilas, different forms. Although, by my mercy, this dham is situated on the earth planet, all scriptures describe it as being without a scent of Maya. If someone thinks that because Navadip is situated on the earth planet, it is inferior to Sri Shvetadip, because Shvetadip is beyond this world, his bhakti will diminish day by day. That is wrong logic, wrong conception. Because this, yes, further, uh, further, Jagannath is telling, only by my desire has my inconceivable potency, Achintya Shakti, brought that transcendental realm to this material world. That truth, which is beyond reason and logic, cannot be obtained just by studying scriptures. Only by my mercy can my devotees understand it. That appeared in this way. It is appearing in this world, but it does not mean that it is material and that is transcendental. That is false logic. Because we have no eyes to see properly that by inconceivable potency that is possible. Unlimited dham can appear in this place. Because everything is possible by everything is possible for omnipotent Supreme Lord. When Sri Ramanuja, whose mind was firm and peaceful, heard Sri Jagannath's words, he became restless out of prema for Sri Gaurango. He said, O Lord, your pastimes are most amazing. Not even the Vedas and other scriptures know of your grandeur. O Lord Jagannath, earlier I used to wonder why the scriptures do not clearly describe the pastimes of Sri Gaurango Mahaprabhu. When I minutely reflected upon the Shrutis, Puranas, and other scriptures, then only did Gaur Tattva manifest in my heart. I said some days back that Rukma Varnam Yada Pashati, that, that is one hint of Gaur Tattva in Shruti, in Upanishad. Now, through your instruction, all my doubts have been removed and the rasa of Sri Gaura's pastimes have arisen in my heart. If you allow me, I will go to Sri Navadip and then preach about Sri Gaur Lila throughout all the three worlds. I will reveal the hidden scriptures. In other words, I will bring out the scriptural evidences regarding Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu and make everyone in the three worlds devotees of Sri Gaurahari. 
Sink Ramanuja's enthusiasm, Lord Jagannath said, O Ramanuja, do not speak like this now. Secretly, keep the tattva of Sri Gaurahari's pastimes to yourself. After the pastimes of Sri uh, Sriman Mahaprabhu have become unmanifest, everyone will automatically come to know of them. Preach only about Dasya Rasa to me and constantly worship Sri Gaura in your heart. After receiving Sri Jagannath's instruction, Sri Ramanuj Mahashwai came secretly to Sri Navadip. When Sri Vishwakshen, this is one associate of Vishnu Bhagavan of Naren in Baikunta, who carries remnants of offering made to Bhagavan. When Sri Vishwakshen came to know of Sri Ramanuj's arrival in Navadip, he considered that Sri Ramanuj may well become absorbed in ecstatic emotions and thus reveal the truth about Navadip. To ensure that Sri Ramanuj did not reveal Gaur Lila prematurely, Vishwakshin brought Sri Ramanuj to this place, Sri Baikuntapur. Upon seeing it, Ramanuj became enchanted. The Lord of the spiritual realm, Bhagavan Sri Narayan, mercifully showed Sri Ramanuj his form, which is served by the potencies Sri Bhu and Lila. Sri Ramanuj considered himself blessed to behold his worshipful Lord. After just a moment, Sri Ramanuj saw the captivatingly beautiful form of Sri Gaurahari, the son of Sri Jagannath Mishra, in the place of Sri Narayan. Sri Ramanuj fainted seeing the splendor of Sri Gaurahari's beauty. Sri Gaurahari mercifully placed his lotus foot on Ramanuj's head. After receiving divine knowledge, Sri Ramanuj began to pray as follows. O Lord, will I be able to behold your manifest pastimes in the town of Nadia? Saying this, Sri Ramanuja Acharya, filled with prem, began to shed tears and continued. I will never leave Navadip to go anywhere else. Sri Gaurahari mercifully spoke with a sweet voice, O son of Keshava, your desire will certainly be fulfilled. When my pastimes become manifest here in Nadia, you will also take birth here. Having said this, Sri Gaurahari disappeared. Sri Ramanuj was satisfied and resumed his journey. After a short time, he arrived in Kurmastan, where he met with his disciples. He began preaching Dasya Rasa throughout South India. Internally, however, he was absorbed in thoughts of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu of Sri Navadip. By the mercy of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu, Sri Ramanuj took birth in this eternal dham as Sri Ananta. He saw the marriage ceremony of Sri Lakshmi Priya and Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu in the house of Sri Balaba Acharya, the father of Sri Lakshmi Priya, that is first wife of Mahaprabhu, Lakshmi Priya. Mahaprabhu as Gaur Narayan has two wives, Vishnu Priya and Lakshmi Priya in as Gaur Narayan, but as Gaur Krishna, Gadadhar is his potency, Radharani. So Ananta Prabhu, one devotee, he saw this marriage. Sri Nitananda Prabhu said, O devotees, behold the place where Sri Ananta's house once stood. Many devotees of Lord Sri Narayan resided at this place. 
It is well known that the king said of that time established service to Bhagavan Sri Narayan in this holy place. All the devotees became unlimitedly blissful upon seeing the forest named Nishriyasa, which is situated beyond the Viraja river. So all this knowledge, transcendental knowledge, is coming to this world in installments by the grace of Krishna. He is regulating all this preaching, how it is going on. So he told Ramanju, now you preach for Dasyaras in South India. Then gradually it will come. So everything is regulated by Supreme. Nishriyasa is like topmost welfare. In that verse, Labdas Durlavam Idam Bahu Sambavante Manusham Artadam Anitam Abhihadira Turnam Jateta Napateta Anumrita Javan Nishriya Saya Bisha Kalu Sarvatasya. That verse. You, we should immediately start doing bhajan, means to strive for highest welfare, Nishriyasa. As they heard and spoke these ancient narrations, they arrived near Mahatpur. Sri Nitananda Prabhu said, this place is Kamyavan of Braja. All of you behold this abode with great devotion. In ancient times, there were five banyan trees. By the will of Sriman Mahaprabhu, these trees have now disappeared. Although today everyone calls this place Matapur, its old name is mentioned in the scripture is Mahatpur. When during their exile, the five Pandavas and Draupadi lived in Cognito, they came to Gauradesh, Bengal. When they were residing in the village of Ekachakra, Judishtir Maharaj became overwhelmed upon having a dream by which he understood the glories of Nodia. The next day, they all came to this place, which is situated within the area of Sri Navadip. Simply by desiring darshan of Sri Navadip Dham, they felt elated. Seeing the beauty of Sri Navadip, the sons of Pandu began to glorify the fortune of the residents of Gauradesh. The Pandavas resided at this place for some time and killed many demons. Behold this place, known by the name Yudhishthir Tila, <coughs> that is like a hill, hillock, and also Draupadi Kunda, which is situated nearby. <coughs> Maharaj Yudhishthir understood the glories of this place and therefore stayed here for a long time. One day, in a dream, Maharaj Yudhishthi received darshan of the astonishing form of Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu. The luster of Mahaprabhu's divine limbs illuminated all directions. Smiling, Sri Gaurahari spoke to Yudhishthi Maharaj. Just behold my form, which is rarely seen. I, Nanda Nandan Shri Krishna always reside in your home as your friend and just like a member of your family. This Shri Navadip Dham is the essence of all other holy places. This Dham manifests in Kali Yuga and destroys the darkness of ignorance of all living entities. All of you are eternally my servants. At the, at the time of my appearance in the form of Gaurahari, you will also take birth again. I will always stay with you and spend my time on the shore of the ocean in Sri Purushottam Kshetra in the land of Utkal, that is Orissa. Now you should go to Oradesh, Orissa, purify that place and remove the sufferings of the living entities there. When he awoke from his dream, Maharaj Yudhishthir told his brothers about it. They discussed the matter and then, together with Draupadi, 
began their journey towards the land of Orissa. Although they felt great sorrow to leave Sri Navadip Dham, they followed the instruction of Sri Man Mahaprabhu. They are uh, Rai Bhavananda in Gaur Lila is Pandu and his five sons uh, Raya Ramananda, then Gopinath Patanayak, then I think Baninath, and two more, five brothers. With them, Mahaprabhu did his lila there in Purushottam. That is why he said here that you will also take birth again. Raya Ramananda is Arjuna. Srila Madhva Charjo's arrival in Mahatpur. But in Raya Ramananda there are five personalities inside. Also Bishaka and Arjuna Gopi and um, some five there. One of them is Arjuna of Pan Panchapanda. Sri Madhva Muni, Srila Madhva Acharya, resided in this place for a long time with his disciples in Mahatpur. Sri Gauranga Sundar was very merciful to Sri Man Madhva Acharya and in a dream he bestowed upon him darshan of his supremely enchanting form. Smiling, Sri Gaura Chandra said to Sri Madhva Acharya, Everyone knows that you are my eternal servant. When I appear in Sri Navadip, I will accept your sampradaya. Now, with great effort, you should carefully uproot the false scriptures of Mayavad everywhere. You should reveal the glories of the deity. I will further develop your pure doctrine. Having spoken thus, Sri Gaura Chandra disappeared. When Sri Madhva Muni woke up, he remembered his dream and fell unconscious. When he came back to his senses, Sri Madhva Muni said, Will I again be able to see that beautiful golden complexion form? And began to weep. Just then he heard the divine voice from the clear sky. You should worship me secretly. As a result of your worship, you will surely come to me. When he heard the divine voice speak, Shilamadva Charja regained his composure and then he set out to defeat the Mayavadis because that was his seva at that time. He was sent for this to establish eternality of Diti and to uh, propagate this eternal devotion by refuting Mayavati. As they recounted and heard these old narrations, they all arrived in Rudradvip. Upon reaching there, Sri Nitananda Prabhu said, this Rudradip has been divided into two parts by the power of the river Bhagirati. By the will of Sriman Mahaprabhu, no people reside here now. Just see, because of the flow of Sri Ganga, the western island is moving toward the eastern bank. Now see Sri Shankarpur from here. Look how the entire Shankarpur which is situated on the bank of the Ganga, is beautified. Once Sri Shankaracharya, during his scholarly conquests, arrived here for the purpose of defeating the scholars of Sri Navadip. Although Acharya Shankar, in his heart, was the best of all Vaishnavas, Vaishnavanam Jata Shambhu Shiva, externally, he wore the dress of a servant of Maya, a Mayavadi, as an Advaita Vadi sannyasi. 
although he was a partial avatar of Rudra himself and was greatly talented, still Shankaracharya skillfully preached a hidden form of Buddhism to bring Buddhists to Vedic evidence. He attracted them in that way because that is one step uh, higher. Then Ramanuj came and they preached what is actually in the Veda. But if you read Upanishad, then you will see that uh, that interpretation of Advaita Vat is not so easy and uh, not so difficult to arrive at. Only someone who has grace of devotee, he can understand that it is about devotion. But otherwise you have in Upanishad also, the Brahma Bindu Upanishad, that there is a air in the pot and air outside. When you break the pot, then there is no difference. It is there. So the Mayavadis, they often they quote this. But Ramanuj and other Vaishnava charges, because there it is written, when Jivas Upadis, means material designations are destroyed, then it will happen like this, as air from the pot out. But they explained, Vaishnava Charjo, that this means the Jiva in Upadi is like that. But when that pot will be broken, means when Jiva will give up all Upadis, material egos, they, the Jiva will unite in love with Brahma, with Supreme Lord. Not that they become like absolutely one, but who can understand this meaning? only devotees. Otherwise, if you just by literal meaning, if you read Upanishads, then very easily you will come to Advaita Vat conclusion. So Shankaracharya did not have such uh, difficult job to preach that. In some places he had to little twist uh, in Vedanta Sutra and the Shakti Parinama like this. But otherwise, one can get many like this. But the one who got association of devotee, he can understand by realization what is meant and what is Sayuja also. So like this. But Shankar, Shankar Acharya had to do that job on the order of Govinda to bring Buddhists to Vedic Praman. They will have faith. Then, when they will have faith and in eternal reality, Buddhists, they don't believe in any eternal reality. For them, everything is temporary, no eternal reality. But Brahman is eternal. Shankaracharya spoke, that is eternal. And then, when they have some taste of eternal reality and faith in the Vedas, then Ramanuja was sent to speak about eternal devotion. Sri Shankar Acharya was preaching Mayavad only to follow the order of the Supreme Lord. When he came to the city of Nadia, Sri Gaurachandra appeared to him in a dream and mercifully spoke to him with sweet words. You are my servant. You are diligently, diligently preaching Mayavad to fulfill my order. However, Sri Navadip Dham is most dear to me, and therefore Mayavad cannot be preached here. Here, breed the sheep together with Prada Maya spreads a false explanation of the Agama scriptures. They only preach to those who have enmity towards my devotees, because their sole purpose is to deceive these people. Those who are averse to Krishna and his devotees, they will get that sort of teaching. False explanation. Since this place is generally for my devotees, it is not proper to spread Mayavat and other such corrupt philosophies here. 
Therefore, you should go somewhere else. Do not cause any pain to the residents of Navadip. From this dream, Sri Shankaracharya understood the truth about Sri Navadip and full of bhakti, he went elsewhere. Uh, once one devotee asked Gurudev, how I can be freed from Mayavad? Then Gurudev said, you have to go to Navadip. Then you can be free because Mahaprabhu prohibited their preaching of Mayavad. And another answer also would have said, when you will get association of realized devotee, then you can be free, like Saravam Bhattacharya when getting the grace of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But you will you will find in really in Upanishad this Aham Brahmasmi and I am everything, I am Manu, there is no difference between you and me, and like all these statements you will find. But that is why it is said, you need a realized teacher to understand properly. So here, uh, yes, the sage Bama Dev realized this and declared, I became Manu, I became Sun God. Because I am everything. Aham Brahmasmi. Even today, anyone who realizes I am Brahman becomes everything. It is in Brihadaranika. But what is the meaning? Uh, when, one more. Even a devata cannot prevent that person's liberation he, since he is the controller of them. The person who worships some devata and thinks that the Devata is one person and I am another person does not know. He is like an animal for the Devatas. Yes, as many animals serve men, each man serves Devatas. If one animal is taken from the man, he grieves what to speak if many animals are taken from him. Therefore, the Devatas do not prefer that men know Brahman. They put obstacle, but then you will find in Ramanuja's commentary what is the meaning. Uh, those who understood this among the devatas became everything. They attained a realization of everything up to Paramatma who is everything. They realize that the Lord pervades all Atmas. I am Manu means the Lord within myself is the Lord within Manu. The person who has realized the Lord is the controller Atma of the Devatas. So, I, because another topic, maybe some other time, but what I wanted to say is that if one goes by literary meanings, it is not so difficult to come to Advaita Vat uh, by reading Upanishad. That is why it is said, you need bona fide guru to know the actual meaning. So, here meaning is, the Supreme Lord is within me. That is the meaning. And there are other explanations, but now there is no time. So Shankaracharya had to spread that Advaita Vat to bring Buddhists. But Ramanuja, Madhva, Vishnu, Samin, Imbarka, they preached eternal devotion. That is the actual meaning of Shastra. Final conclusion. This Rudra Dip is the place of the 11 Rudras. Together here, they glorify Sri Gaurahari. The Rudra, whose complexion is Nila Lohita, is the Lord of all the Rudras. He, Nila Lohita Rudra, continuously dances here full of joy. Seeing his dance, the demigods in heaven also become happy and shower flowers. Once Sri Vishnu Swami also came here with his disciples while he was on tour defeating opposing philosophies. 
he spent the night here in Rudradvit. While here, all of his disciples began to dance and chant Hari Hari, and Sri Vishnu Sami himself began to recite prayers from the Shrutis. Extremely pleased by their deliberation on Bhakti, Sri Nila Lohita Rudra mercifully appeared there. Sri Nila Lohita Rudra appeared in that assembly of Vaishnavas. Upon seeing his form, Sri Vishnu Sami became greatly astonished and with folded hands began to praise him. Rudra, being most merciful to Vishnu Swami, said, You Vaishnavas are extremely dear to me. My heart is very satisfied by your discussion on bhakti. Ask any boon you like from me and I will mercifully grant it because there is nothing that I do not give to the Vaishnavas. After offering his prostrated obeisances, Sri Vishnu Swami, feeling supreme joy, folded his hands and prayed for a boon. O Lord, please give us such a boon by which we may attain perfection within any sampradaya that preaches bhakti. <clears throat> like in that point, when pati is broken, then Jiva will be free from worldly egos and will be same as that out air sky. In the sense of both are free of upadis. But that does not mean that they are totally the same, because there are other statements in Upanishads which say that you will you will be similar to Supreme Lord, and there will be uh, that pastime and all this. But if you take one statement out of context and you explain it like uh, Shankaracharya was doing, then easily you can get Advaita Vat. Out. In great happiness, Sri Rudra bestowed upon them a benediction and accepted them within his own Sampradaya. Sri Vishnu Sami thus established his own Sampradaya named Sri Rudra Sampradaya and began to dance and sing. By the mercy of Rudra, Sri Vishnu Sami stayed at this very place and began to worship Sri Gaurachandra with the purpose of attaining divine love. In Sri Vishnu Sami's dream, Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu told him, you have received the mercy of my devotee Rudra Shiva. You are blessed because in Sri Navadip you have received the wealth of bhakti. Now you should spread the philosophy of Shuddha Advaita, purified non-dualism. The Shankara Charjo made Kevala Advaita, means oneness. There is absolute oneness, no difference. Any kind of difference, that is all false, Maya. But Ramanuj, he preached Vishishta Advaita. There is oneness, but with specialities, with distinctions. There are attributes of Brahman. He has qualities. And Jiva also, they are one attribute of Brahman like this. Vishishta Advaita and Vishnu Swami, he preached Shuddha Advaita, purified oneness. He also explained there is difference. And Madhva Charjo preached Kevala Advaita. No, there is difference between Supreme Lord and Jiva, and between Jiva and another Jiva, between one matter, another matter, well, five. And matter and supreme lord and matter and jiva and one matter to another. There are five types of difference eternally they are existing. Very clearly he said. So here Mahaprabhu is telling to Vishnu Swami, there are four Vaishnava charges. They are all preaching eternal devotion. After some time, when I will appear as Sri Gaurahari, you will take birth as Sri Ballava Bhata. After meeting me in Sri Kshetra Puri, you will go to Mahavan and promote your Sampradaya. Sri Nityananda Prabhu said, O Jiva, now Sri Ballava Acharya is in Gokul. When you go 
to Braja, you will get his darshan. Jiva Goswami met him. Having spoken thus, Sri Nityananda Prabhu turned his face towards the south and happily began to walk towards the beautiful bank of the Ganga named Paradanga. Because for every Sampradaya, you have to have commentary to scripture, to Shruti means Upanishads, to Smriti, generally this means Bhagavad Gita, part of Mahabharata, and Vedanta Sutra, you have to have commentary. So all Vaishnava charges, they explain the devotion is there, not oneness and no devotion. No, that is not the purport. Uh, but you cannot get this type of purport and devotion to Krishna without the grace of devotee. When they came to the bank of Sri Bhagirati, Sri Nitananda Prabhu showed Sri Jiva, Sri Rasa Mandal, and Sri Dhira Samira. Sri Nitananda Prabhu said, O Jiva, just behold this eternal Brindavan. Here one can see the pastimes of Brindavan. Hearing the name of Brindavan, Jiva became overwhelmed with Prem, and streams of tears began to flow from his eyes. Sri Nityananda Prabhu said, Here, together with his devotees, Sri Gauranga Mahaprabhu performed kirtan of the verses describing Rasalila. But with his devotees, not in public. Because others may come, they will misunderstand. Those advanced, pure devotees, when Mahaprabhu said, I will make dancing drama in Chandra Shekaracharya's house. I will dance as Shakti. Only those who have control over the senses, they can come to see. You will find in Chaitanya Bhagavad, Mahaprabhu It is not in for public or to, to make, to try to impress upon others. No. And also, you will find there that no devotee is boasting his qualification. No, I'm qualified. I'm, I, I have qualification. Shriva's Pandit is pure devotee. Advaita Charjo, pure devotee. They became disappointed. They said, oh, then we cannot come to see your drama performance. We are not eligible. Because devotees always, they are humble. They never say, I am qualified. As with assertion, I am that. They said we cannot come. Then Mahaprabhu said, No, you can come. By my grace, you will have control over senses, you can come. You will be Jogeshwara. But Mahaprabhu wanted to give this teaching that such, such pastimes, they are not to be discussed in public and with those devotees who have not reached at least Nishta stage. Otherwise, they will misunderstand and they may imitate and uh, misuse and like this. So, Mahab, you will find in Chaitanya Bhagavad, you can see. Vyasadeva also in Bhagavatam, he wrote. If you are not Shiva and you try to drink that poison, what will happen? So, eligible persons. And he gave conditions, Shraddhanvita and Anushrinvita. You have to have firm belief that Krishna is the only enjoyer and master. And this has to be not in theory. It has to be in your life. This belief. You have to prove it in your life that Krishna is the only enjoyer. And Anushrinuyat, Chabarnayat, you have to continuously one meaning our Parangulya said you have to under the guidance of realized soul you have to hear and he will see the qualification because he's realized soul. Another meaning is Anu means continuously. Who can do continuously hearing and speaking about that topic? One who is above Nishta. Otherwise it is impossible continuous. So the conditions are there. So here Mahaprabhu 
date with his devotees performed kirtan of the verses describing Krasilina. It is not uh, banned, but the, it is the question of adhikar, eligibility, qualification. O Jiva, the pastime place in Brindavan called Maharasa Stali or Bangshibat, is the bank of the Janavi in Navadip. Here, Shri Krishna eternally performs Rasa Lila with the gopis. Sometimes a fortunate jiva beholds that pastime. Behold, Shri Dhira Samira to the west of Rasa Stali. Listen, O supremely intelligent and great jiva, this is a place of bhajan. In Braja, Dhira Samira is splendidly situated on the bank of the Jamuna, and here it is situated on the bank of the Ganga. It appears to be the bank of the Ganga, but actually it is not so, because Sri Jamuna flows along Ganga's western bank. That is on that side, where the sandy beach is there. In Navadip, you will find that side. Opposite to Mayapur. This is why Sri Sachinandan called this beautiful place on the bank of the Jamuna, Brindavan. Jagannathas Babaji Maharaj and Gorkishwar Das Babaji, they used to do bhajan there. O Jiva, all the past and places of Brindavan are splendidly situated here. There is no difference between Sri Dham Brindavan and Sri Navadip Dham. O Jiva, you should never see any difference between Sri Gaurahari and Sri Krishna. After showing Brindaban to Sri Jiva, Sri Nitananda Prabhu, who was immersed in powerful transcendental emotions, continued onward. They proceeded further toward the north and spent the night in Rudradvip. This Bhakti Vinod, whose only wealth is the lotus feet of Sri Nitananda Prabhu and Sri Janava Devi, is singing the glories of Sri Nadia. Our mat will go tomorrow to that place, Rudradip. There is one Gauriya mat there, and there is one very nice Maharaj there, Srila Bhakti Vaibha Sagar Maharaj. Now he's senior, he's uh, also presiding over the meetings in Mayapur. He's a very uh, nice Vaishnav, realized soul, and if you will come, then you, you should speak with him. First, he will ask you which language you understand, Hindi, Bengali, or English. Then what you will say in that language, he will speak. He can speak very nice English. Rudradvip, Gauriamat. You will go there, entering. Then first, you will meet Shiva on your right side. Before Mat, just before Mat, Shiva is there. You have to bow down, offer some flowers or water, Shiva. Then you go there, and there is Gauriya Mat. Rudra Deep Gauriya Mat. All glories, all glories to Nadia Bihari, Sri Gaura Chandra. All glories to Sri Nitananda Prabhu the master of the village named Eka Chakra. All glories to the Lord of Shantipur, Sri Advaita Prabhu. All glories to Sri Gadadhar Pandit, a resident of Ramachandrapur. Ramachandrapur is in that uh, Kuladvip area, uh, that side of Ganga, opposite to Mayapur. All glories, all glories to the essence of a wish-fulfilling gem, Shri Gauramandal, where in Kali Yuga, Bhagavan Shri Krishna performs his pastimes. Shri Nitananda Prabhu, the son of Padmavati, crossed Shri Janavi and proceeded on a little further. Because at that time Rudra Deep was on that side of Ganga, western side, but nowadays it is on this side, same as Mayapur. But you have to go there from Jogapit. You turn left and there, there you go there. 
then you will come to Rudratit. But before it was on that side, that is why they crossed the Janavi. And uh, they came, see this supremely enchanting place named Bilva Paksha. Our mat goes there on the second day, Simantadri, because otherwise it is difficult to again go. This Bilva Paksha is north of Simanta. He said to the devotees, nowadays everyone calls it Bel Pukuria. But nowadays, that is when the time of Bhakti Thakur, Bel Pukuria, but nowadays it is Bel Pukur. Every time it, they be, the, it becomes more and more short, like Chagda, no, Chakra Daha. Our Guru Dev told, Chakra Daha is original name. And then they start to say Chagdaha. And now they say Chagda. Or you will find in Nerpuri, the original name is Alvarnat. Alvars are personal associates of Naran. Alvarnat. But when they make short, Alnat. Alnat. So here also, Bil, now it is Bilpukur. The scriptures declare this place to be Bilvavan of Brajadham. Behold this same place in Navadip. Pancha Mukha Bilvakesh, Shiva, used to, that is five mouth, five faced, five faced Shiva, used to reside here. For 15 days, many Brahmanas worshipped him by offering him leaves of the bell tree, the in English wood apple. Pleased with them, Lord Shiva blessed them with the boon of Sri Krishna Bhakti, because that fruit bell, you know, that is very hard. You have to break it. Very difficult to break, but once you break, that is very good tasty inside, very sweet and good for digestion, very healthy. Wood apple. Sri Nimbaditya was one of those Brahmanas. 15, uh, they were worshipping Shiva for 15 days in the forest. Full of devotion, he worshipped Panchamukha Shankarji. Being pleased with his worship, Pancha Mukha Shankar, five-faced Shiva, said to Sri Nimbaditya, A divine forest of bell trees, Bilovan, is situated on the border of this village. In that forest, Chatuksan, means four Kumaras, are immersed in deep meditation. By their mercy, you will achieve transcendental knowledge. Chatuksan are your gurus. All of your heart's desires will be fulfilled by serving them. Shiva is himself guru. He accepted Vishnu Sami. But here he sent them there to, they are your gurus. That is also all arranged. Having spoken thus, Maheshwar disappeared. Sri Nimbaditya searched for the place that Maheshwar had told him about. And in doing so, he arrived here at Bilvavan. In Bilvavan, he saw the four sages, Sri Sanak, Sanandan, Sanatan, and Sanat Kumar, sitting on a beautiful raised platform. No ordinary person was able to see those four naked youths, whose character was supremely illustrious, and who were sitting close to Bridakesh Shiva. When Sri Nimbaditya Acharya saw them, he began to eagerly call out, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, feeling excessive joy. Upon hearing the name Hari, their meditation broke and they saw a Vaishnav standing in front of them. One by one, those four youths happily embraced Sri Nimbaditya. Who are you? They asked Sri Nimbaditya. Why have you come here? Please introduce yourself. We will certainly fulfill your desire. When he heard their words, 
Shrinim Baditya first offered them his obeisances. Thereafter, with great humility, he told them about himself. After learning about Sri Nimbarka's identity, Sri Sanat Kumar smiled and said, The terrible Kali Yuga is coming. Knowing this, the God of all gods, Sri Krishna, made a firm resolution to spread bhakti for the supreme benefit of the living beings. Only by devotion we can be rescued from this Kali Yuga. The Supreme Lord transmitted his power into four devotees and sent them to spread, to spread bhakti throughout the world. Sri Ramanuj, Sri Madhva and Sri Vishnu Sami are three of those great personalities who are endowed with the power of Bhagavan. You, O best of devotees, are the fourth. Shri Ramanuja Acharya, Shri Madhva Acharya and Shri Vishnu Sami were accepted in the Bhakti Sampradayas of Shri Lakshmi Devi, Shri Brahma and Shri Rudra respectively. From today, we accept you into our Bhakti Sampradaya. Our purpose is to become blessed by accepting you as our disciple. We used to be immersed in impersonal knowledge. But by Bhagavan's special mercy, this sin of ours was abolished. Sin. Because there is no service of Bhagavan there. That is, if you do wrong activities, this is wrong. If you do no activities, it's also wrong. You have to do right activities as eternal servant of Krishna you should serve. That is also sin. To go on strike. I will not work, I will strike, I will not work. No, you have to work properly. Now we understand that Shuddha Bhakti is the most excellent object. We have also composed a Samhita, a Samhita based on Bhakti. The name of this Samhita is Sanat Kumara Samhita. You will find Srila Bhakti on Thakur is quoting from this Samhita in Jeva Dharma also. Your Diksha will be in accordance with the teachings in this Samhita. Seeing the kindness of his Sri Gurudev, the intelligent Sri Nimbarka took bath in the river Bhagirati without any delay and then returned. He offered his prostrated obeisances and humbly said, O Master, O Savior of the Fallen, please deliver this lowly person. Shri Chatur San for Kumaras gave him the Jugala Mantra of Shri Radha Krishna and instructed him in worshipping Shri Radha Krishna while filled with spiritual sentiments. Bhava Mark or Raga Mark. This mantra they are chanting Radha Krishna, Radha Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Radha Radha. Radha Sham, Radha Sham, Sham Sham, Radha Radha. Our Gurudev sometimes used to sing before Mahamantra. After receiving the mantra, Sri Nimbaditya Acharya sat in this sacred place and worshipped Jugala Kishore, the divine youthful couple, according to the injunctions of Sanat Kumar Samhita. Hmm. Now, what happened? We will hear tomorrow. Tomorrow we will also conclude this parikrama. He got his mantra, Radha Krishna mantra, and now he is doing bhajan. So what will happen? What happened? We'll hear tomorrow. <laughs>